it is time to wrap up May and I have a lot of books to share. Hi everyone, my name is Tori, this is Novel Life, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm wrapping up May. I have 19 books to talk about and that is, a, it's, it's a lot of books, it's a lot of books. I have read 12 audiobooks in the month of May and I had seven ebooks that I read. I had no physical books, even though I will hold up some physical books, I didn't actually read these physically because digital reading has been my life lately. Now for a breakdown of star rating, I had three five star reads, two four and a half stars, eight four stars, four three and a half stars, and two three stars. So towards the end of the month, I really kind of was picking not the best books that I wanted to read and that in turn made me have a lower rating and it's okay, things happen. But for page count, I do have page count this time and that's 6,794 pages, which is a ton. That's a ton of pages and I'm very happy with that number. Before we talk about all the books that I read in May, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video and that is Lexi Blake. So Lexi Blake has a brand new book out. This is the first book in a series where you follow three young women in each book and um, a high school pact that they made to make it big in New York City one day. In this book you're following Annika. She has big dreams for herself and she is thrown onto this project where it's a reality dating show. Now the main contestant on the dating show is Luca and he is a prince of a small European nation. Now Annika with her TV production she's thrown on this project to go undercover which is actually really cool but then the producer sees that there's tension between Annika and Luca and she and they throw them together in this kind of like weird twist on the dating show and I thought that sounded so fun. This is on the shorter side. It is a perfect summer contemporary romance to read. If you want to pick it up, it is now available to purchase the ebook, audio, or paperback. I will have the link in the description box below, but thank you so much to Lexi Blake for sponsoring this video. With all that being said, let's now jump into all the books that I read. The first one that I read in May was Fourth Degree by Nikki Castle. So this book actually came out May, I think May 3rd. I had an arc of it and I read this book in two days. I am a huge fan of Nikki Castle. I love this MMA series that she's created. This is the fifth book in the fight game series and it is a really good found family like in, within the gym. Now this book just so happens to be age gap. It is a coach athlete. She is new to the gym. She is the oldest sibling and she is taking care of her younger teenage brother, her mother, who's going through a diagnosis. And there's just so many emotions that I didn't think would come up in this book, but it did and it actually made me cry. I just related to our female character so much. I loved her so, so much. I love the tension, like legit from page five when these characters meet, the tension is just off the charts. It is off the charts, you can feel it, it like crackles across the page and I just ate this book up. Um, obviously I gave it five stars. I love Nikki Castle. I always say that Two Fights is my favorite book by her, but I'm not gonna lie, this one might take my top spot between this one and Two Fights, depending on the day. Those two are my favorites, so yeah, I love Nikki Castle. I did do an Instagram Live with her. It is still over on my Instagram. You can go watch it where we chat all things fight game series, what's next, and yeah. Highly suggest you picking up this MMA romance. Like, oh, it's so good, so good. I was in a big fantasy mood this month. I had a lot of good fantasy reads. Some were okay and some were actually really good, but I started Blood and Steel, which is the Legends of Thesmar series. Now, I did a whole reading vlog where my friends pick my books. I had a lot of friends send in books so I put them in a coffee mug and I drew them and this was the first one. So this is the first one featured in that vlog. Rachel from Ravenhead Reader picked this for me and I really enjoyed this. I gave this a solid four star. It's a little on the longer side. I did listen to the audiobook but I really like the dynamic between the female and the male characters. I did go on to read the second book which is A Vow and Ruin, Vows and Ruin and I also gave that four stars and while that is like a little bit of a weaker four stars, this is a solid four star. Now I do like the series. I do like where it's going. I have to read the third book before the fourth book comes out but basically this whole series follows this female character. She finds out that at 27 years old she is going to die. It's called a fate stone. They tell you like what age you're going to die. So she has like three years to get all of her goals out. Now she wants to become a warrior of Thesmar. I think that's what they're called. It's like the highest warrior like that you can get in this kingdom. But there's a little caveat. Women cannot wield weapons. There is this like prophecy thing that basically said women cannot wield weapons because the last time a woman wielded a weapon that she brought like darkness upon the kingdom or something like that. So uh, she has to figure that out in this book and she does. And in the second book, 
um, our main male character, once you see the tension in this, they become like mentor and apprentice kind of a thing. Like he's training her more. The tension's very good. The ending of the second book, I did not see coming. Uh, did not see coming at all. Like literally took me by surprise. So this is a very good start to this fantasy series. I really like books one and two and I can't wait to read books three and four but it's definitely one that I'm happy to have on my shelf because I really did enjoy it now the next book I read was unforgettable by Willow Astor this is a small town contemporary romance I am doing a whole read-along of the landmark mountain series by Willow Astor over on my patreon I let them pick a series every like three to four months and they picked this series um our live show is going to be at the end of June so you can join on my patreon it's always linked in the description box but this one wasn't my favorite I gave it three stars and I this is like a classic for me where enemies to lovers goes wrong if that makes sense like it's where enemies to lovers just does not hit in the right way for me I wanted to love it but it just was like they hate each other and they had this like super hard tension right at the beginning of the book but when it switched but when it switched to lovers I didn't really understand it and it kind of just threw me for a loop and I don't know why like basically the whole premise is he is taking over where she works and the family farm and she doesn't like that but then they're forced to kind of work together so it's kind of a workplace thing I really it was a three star it was a book existing in the world I always say that about three stars like they're not my favorite it, like it was solid like the writing was okay it just wasn't the book for me I did read the second book which is called someday and I gave this four stars I listened to this whole book in a day I went to go see my aunt and uncle and I drove with my parents which was a long drive and I will never do again I will fly next time um but yeah I listened to this whole book in a day I really really enjoyed it this is a second chance romance our female character you see that she left this small town for a reason and when those reasons come out I was legit not expecting it there are some triggers for there are some trigger warnings for this book but when I tell you this is like why I love second chance romance our hero feels like so guilty for all the things that he's thought and all the things that he's probably said about her in the past after he realizes what the reason was of why she left and I just was not expecting to love it so much and I really love their tension I really love their chemistry in this book so so far book one wasn't my favorite book two I liked a lot more I still have three more books to read in June in this series before our live show but it is it is going well so far and yeah you can join us but that was a good like small town contemporary romance I'll stick with that series and see um I don't know if the next one's a three star I don't know if I'll continue just because like why would I continue reading books but I gave the author two books the third one is my like make or break it you know I did read a super dark eh, kind of dark mafia romance and that is behind the broken by Chloe C now I'm gonna try to pronounce her name I picked this up at a polycon because I really like this cover the inside has like that Germani fanfic artwork and I really love the pink dust jacket but this is the first book in a duet the second book actually just came out it's on my Kindle I downloaded it in KU this is like mafia adjacent he is like a very morally great character the prologue really got me I was not expecting to get emotional but this one was a three and a half star read for me I could see the potential it took me a little bit of time to get into the writing style from the author because I've never read anything by her it reads very not flowery but like just different like it's a different writing style so it took me a little bit of time to get into but basically he goes undercover to become the bodyguard for the he's running for president his daughter and they kind of have like a thing so it's a little bit forbidden but also she is very badass and he has to realize that that she will do whatever really she wants um so yeah it was a good like mafia adjacent I think the mafia aspects are going to kick in more in the second book but I really like this one so I have discovered a new author and I'm not mad about that. I'm not a mad, I'm not mad about that at all. I did get an ALC for Skies Over Caledonia by Samantha Young. I got this through Must Love Audio and I gave this four and a half stars. So this is the third or fourth book in the, oh my God, Scottish Highlands series. I forgot this series. Um, the Highland series, I think it's called. Anyway, all takes place in Scotland, kind of small town. You see our female character. She's gone through it, um, and she is the sister of one of the previous characters you see in the series, and she comes and she wants to stay in Scotland, but she's visited her, her sister so much that her visa, they're like, uh, it's flagged because she's been in and out so much. And because of that, she's like, how can I stay in the country? How can I stay with my sister? So it's a marriage of convenience between her and this, like, super grumpy hero. I really love this. Like, when when people talk about like the my wife like part of a romance book when the my wife kicked in 
I was like, oh my god. This is very much romantic suspense, and I was not expecting that. I mean, like, I knew Samantha Young wrote romantic suspense, but it didn't, like, click in my head, you know what I mean? And I really enjoyed it. I just felt a little confused with all the characters because, like, I didn't know a lot of them. But, like, that's totally my fault. That's totally my fault, but I did give it four and a half stars. I really, really enjoyed that book. Now I want to go back and read the rest of the books. Now, this is where a lot of the fantasy romances I read kind of started to kick in. I started um, with A Fate Inked in Blood. I did read this over on my Patreon for an exclusive reading vlog. They chose for me to read this book, and I gave it three and a half stars. The first 100 and 150 pages were really good, very action-packed. It was like started off with a bang. Like, we really get through a lot of things that's happening. Like, it's a very fast-paced but that fast-pacedness slowed down. It was like cut in half. It like stopped. And I felt really bored for the rest of the book. Now, the ending was kind of a surprise, but I, you could see it coming. Like the way that Danielle L. Jensen wrote this book was like you could see it coming from literally a mile away. <laughs> so it didn't really surprise me and it didn't make up for the slowness. Will I pick up the next book? I don't know. I want to, but I don't know. I'm not sure. Like we'll see. We'll see. Um, but I did like the beginning so much. and I liked the Viking aspects. I liked that you know, he, our hero is technically, like, into his father's, like, second bride or something like that. It's very wild. I know that sounds wild, but I did enjoy it. I just wanted a little bit more, and yeah. I just don't know if I'll pick up the second book. I may let some of my friends read the second book, and then if they rate it highly, then I'll go pick it up, but unfortunately, this did not hit. Now, I did continue, and I read To Bleed a Crystal Bloom by Sarah A. Parker, and I gave this book four stars. Did I know what was happening? No. This is a very wild book. This was written in a very wild way to where I was like, I really don't know what's going on. I don't, I don't know. Like, obviously our hero, I think this is more like a guardian ward. Now, I went in not reading the blurb, so that could be my fault, but basically our hero, I think it's a hero, um, he is this guardian of, you see this girl, she's obviously a lot younger. She, he finds her when she's two years old, um, after, like, his friend, it's his friend's daughter, he finds her dying, like, something attacked her safe house and all this stuff like that, so he basically locks her up. It's a dark Rapunzel telling. He locks her up and you see that he has to, like, take her blood, so, like, she has to, like, prick her finger, put blood into, like, this pitcher of water to mix, and she, he drinks it every night, like, that's her offering, and it's just very weird, like, I don't know if it's, like, she's falling in love with him because they're forced together, there are other people in the kingdom that she's, like, practicing fighting, she doesn't leave this safe zone, like, she has this anxiety of leaving, and a, a lot, it was very, I don't even have the words, like, it was a very wild ride, but, like, I do want to continue, I bought the second audiobook, but, and I do want to continue, but it was a very interesting, it was a very, like, different way of reading a fantasy romance that I wasn't expecting. Now, I know Sarah A. Parker has written, uh, When the Moon Hatched, and I did try to physically read that book, and I DNF'd it at, like, 20%, but I have the audiobook. I'm gonna do a dedicated reading vlog for that book, but, yeah. I was, I was very, very intrigued. I did take a break from some fantasy romances to read a contemporary duet, which was The Love of My Next Life and The Life and All the Next. Now, you cannot read book two without reading book one. Book one ends on a major cliffhanger. This, is, this, this duet is angsty and, and forbidden and toxic and all of the above. They're ste they turn step siblings in the first book. Their parents get married, um, but it's her best friend's brother that she's into. There's a lot of talk about mental health in the first book, but more so in the second book of like their healing journey and stuff like that. I really loved it. I gave book one four stars and I gave book two like four and a half five stars. It was very good. Like I said, very toxic, very angsty. So if you're looking for like a Magnolia type, Magnolia Parks type book, definitely pick up that duet. It was wild. Um, I did read In This Iron Ground by Marina Vivancos. So this was another book that my friends picked for me and it's in that vlog. I gave it three and a half stars and this could be because I went into it thinking it's going to be a, a romance for most of the book because I have read some other books by Marina Vivancos. But this one was read like a fiction book. So like 60% of this book you're following Damien from the age of like 12 to 18. So you're going through how hard and tragic his life is and what he's been through and then at 18 you see when he goes off to college he starts having a romance with his I guess one of his best friends it's MM and you see that like he helps him like heal a little bit too so I did like it I just expected more romance and like I said it could have been my fault because I didn't read the blurb but it was still a really solid read like Marina Vivancos's writing is always very emotional and I always really love it so I would I still highly recommend that book it's paranormal there's wolves 
and yeah it was it was very interesting I really did like it I did read two novellas that I'm just gonna briefly talk about it is the scepter and the sword by Jay Bree because a book two in the mortal fate series was coming out and I wanted to read these two novellas the scepter is Rook's story, a little bit of backstory, and the sword is Soren's backstory, and I gave them both four stars. They were both solid reads, and I did really enjoy them. I'm currently in the middle of book two, and I'm very excited to continue reading. I was actually reading right before I filmed this video, which was laying in bed being a vegetable, and I was like, I kind of put makeup on and film today, but I just want to read this book, so yeah. Um, I did read Icebound by Meredith Trapp. Uh, I picked this up because one of my friends, Jess Beasley Book, she wanted me to read this as well. So that's the last book I featured in that vlog. And I gave this four and a half stars. I was actually thoroughly surprised. I went in maybe with a little bit less expectations than I probably should have. Um, but I really liked this. The beginning, she felt like all over the place. And I did see some reviews about that. But she kind of like works it out. You see why she's kind of over, all over the place. The talk of anxiety and panic attacks on page and the mental health of how she feels about having panic attacks as she feels like they're, she's so weak that she has them and she can't get over them and all this stuff like that. I really like that about it. Now, if you're looking for a hero obsessed, he is literally a hero obsessed. He does not leave her alone. Um, in like a not creepy way he just is like I have feelings for her like it's I have this chemistry and I just want to continue with that but like she's like I'm going on this trip and I can't have to I don't have time let's just do friends with benefits so good it is an age gap he's 12 years older than her and that definitely comes into play but he's a pro hockey star so he's always in the limelight he's always in the spotlight always has you know cameras on him and stuff like that and she does not like that but I really like that book I'll definitely be reading more from Meredith Trapp so now I did read a contemporary romance that wasn't my favorite and that's The Rollback by Sarah Adams. I gave this one three, three and a half stars. This was way too long. I was so bored. Um, I love a second chance, but if they would have just had a conversation, if they would have just had a conversation y'all, this whole book would have not existed. Like the whole problems they had. Now. I did like the beginning where she is like the sports agent and he gets signed to her, assigned to her and he doesn't know that, she doesn't know that, so when they meet for the first time he's like, hell no. He puts her through the ringer a little bit because he's like, she left without saying anything, just broke up with me, like I was going to marry her type of a thing. She just did not want to be part of his football career, she didn't want to hold him back, she wanted to do his own thing, which like I get, but they could have had a conversation, you know what I mean, because he was like, I would have still stuck with you, like you're the love of my life, like I never moved on from you basically. And I just, I, oh, it's more of a three star the more that I think about it, but I just, I was really disappointed in this. I love The Cheat Sheet by Sarah Adams, but this one just did not do it for me. Too long, and it didn't really make all that sense to me. Anyway, I did reread A Photo Finish by Elsie Silver. I was able to get an audio copy um, through the, her PR team to read this via audio. I did physically read this book. I listened to this in two days when I was visiting Jess while we were working. I put this audio book on. I forgot, like, okay, listen. I always talk about Reckless and, and Heartless by Elsie Silver, and I talk about Wild Love. And if you're looking for a book in the Gold Rush Ranch series to read that is absolutely fucking amazing, read a photo finish. I wish I could talk about this more, but if you know me and if you know why I love certain um, representation in books, read this book. I, it was a five star read. The audiobook is absolutely amazing. I love the narrators. Violet and Cole are just amazing. Violet is actually the. Um, sister of all the brothers in the oh my god chestnut spring series so you get to see like a glimpse of them but she definitely has that um the um the vibe of the brothers like she is a hard like oh my god she's amazing I love her so freaking much but this is such an underrated book by Elsie like so underrated that I want more people to read it it's one of my favorites in by her like my fourth fourth like top five it's in my top five by Elsie Silver now I also did read Downpour by Maggie Kate now this book has major disability representation our hero gets um bucked off a bull I don't know he's a bull rider and he lands when he gets book bucked off he get he lands on his spine or like his head wrong and he breaks his spine and he cannot walk at first he's a oh I forgot what the term it's a uh, it's not a paraplegic, it's a quadriplegic. Basically from the neck down, he's completely paralyzed. And I do know that over time that you gain mobility back and you see over the next like year and a half that at the beginning of the book, it's like flashes to when um, like how he's 
progressing and so he never fully gets mobility back in his legs to where he can completely walk on his own so he is in a wheelchair for most of the time if not for the rest of his life and he feels a certain type of way about that and I gave this book four stars because I wanted the emotional and mental exploration of being in a wheelchair like being able able-bodied and then being disabled like I wanted to read more about that just because I know that a lot of people do struggle with that like in real life like I struggle with that of being able-bodied and then not being able-bodied anymore um and th I still struggle with that like 20 years later so it is very interesting but I do love the dynamic our female character is complete opposite this is grumpy sunshine like it is a forced proximity she works for him as like an aide who just keeps him company and stuff like that she is wild she is hilarious and I love her so yeah I'll be reading more by Maggie Gates but yeah that was interesting because I was not I, I went in there thinking I was going to hate this book, to be 100% honest, but I actually really liked it. But I did end the month with one of my books off my TBR. I had I wanted to read an audiobook the last day of May, and I read Off the Hook by Julia Olivia. And I have some thoughts. This is Single Dad Nanny, which I do love. Uh, Brother's Ex-Fiance, which is a, it comes into the plot twist, or a plot point, I guess you could say. Um, it is a retelling of Peter and Wendy, like... I don't know, like Peter Pan. I didn't get that, uh, but this book was way too long. I gave it three stars. It was way too long. It didn't need to be that way too long. It was cute because it's a friends with benefits. Like obviously he's being a single dad trying to, you know, care for this kid and working through that and stuff like that and doing everything by himself, which is a struggle. But then you have this woman who wants to be there and he like says some hurtful things at one point and they have this friends with benefits thing. I feel like, they, like I said, and I just, Mm, it didn't mesh. It was too long. It was a 12 hour contemporary audiobook, okay, for a small town. It did not need to be that long, okay? It did not need to. And maybe because I was just coming off of a photo finish where that was a super, like, good reread small town downpour, which is also a small town, like, on a ranch. And those were, like, hits and they were not this long. And it just, like, it didn't live up to those other books. So I think that's kind of why. I felt a certain way but those are all the books that I read in May I did have a pretty good reading month I can't wait for all the books I'm gonna read in June I'm already off to a good start with this fantasy that I'm currently reading but once again I want to thank the sponsor of today's video and that's Lexi Blake make sure you check out the Royal Showman like I said reality TV show she's undercover he's a prince of a European nation they get forced together she gets put on the dating show as well and yeah it just sounds like the perfect summer read I'll have it linked in the description box below if you want to go pick it up but thank you to Lexi Blake for sponsoring this video if you've made it this far and you want to let me know leave me a sword emoji because I'm in a fantasy mood like I'm really diving into the fantasies um at this point and I've been really loving fantasy romances so drop me a sword emoji in the comments down below or like a dagger or whatever thank you so much for watching make sure you like and subscribe for more content for me as always i hope you're living a novel life and i will see you in my next one bye guys